You just got that one. You know, then you got to put put pour a thousand oh. tons of concrete in the floor. Yeah, that's the way to, to go. Put the tarp- spend a lot of time assembling their system, their audio systems. I've seen both sides of it over the years where you buy the raw components, let's say like the speakers, the amplifier, the headphone, whatever it is your system is, right? And you obviously hear music, it plays. Mm. Sounds good. You spent the money on the stuff. To you, you're happy with it. Life is good. And that person just basically, they're done. They're done. It works. And then you got other people that are constantly wanting to tweak that sound. To, okay, say now they bought the raw components. It's like the other person. They bought the gear, but now they want to tweak out the system to see what they can extract, if they can extract more out of the same gear. In other words, you know, not just be happy with the way it is, but can I get more out of what I just paid for? And uh, basically trying to improve resolution throughout the system. And uh, there's a lot to cover there. Well, we could try to touch on a bunch of things that people could look at, look for, think about, try, to try to improve upon your existing stuff. Not that you go out and buy a new pair of speakers every month or year, mm-hmm. right? You're usually gonna have them for some people the whole lifetime, right? Same with amplifiers, they don't last until they start humming and buzzing and blow fuses, right? Mm. So you know, a lot of people keep this stuff long time. So you think about it, if you're gonna spend 20, 20 years of your life listening to the same stuff, it almost seems like a smart idea to see if you can improve upon it at some point in the future. And, and also that would stave off or re- means you can delay the need to replace it, right? If you can make it sound better yeah. at some point, you don't need to get a new, you don't get the, you need to get new stuff. Well, I happen to be on one edge of the spectrum. I happen to be very into modifying, tweaking, improving pretty much everything. And in my experience, it seems a great deal of people don't care at all, don't want to do that sort of thing. So I guess you got to figure out where you are in there. Yeah. Some people would rather just buy something different. Plug and, and throw play. Throw this different product at the problem, see if it matters. And that's okay. You could do that if you talk to somebody who's already done the tweaking. Right. And mm-hmm. they can tell you, give yeah, you the, the list of things to find do. Find someone else that already did yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, right. And say, okay, here's what you got to get. Now, that's that's the shortcut. Mm. You know, It's but, a good idea. But that's yep. assuming that you want, you will like everything they like in terms of sound, which is extremely yeah. rare. Usually the tweak goes toward your subjective nature, like what you want to hear, see, whatever, right? That's the big issue with reviews and audio. When you get to the high end, most things are pretty decent. So you're looking at minor differences, and sometimes these differences more closely align to your preferences. Uh, so it is a little difficult to do without you having firsthand direct experience, but also that's quite difficult as well. You can't really feasibly hear everything that's ever existed and will exist. Very impractical, typically very expensive. But what you can do is tweak things. Usually there's things you can do that are affordable that may improve the performance of your current system, but... Again, very complicated because it's massively dependent on what the faults are with the system you have now, what the limiting factors are. We always like relate to photography because it seems like more people have done, a lot of people have done that where they haven't really tweaked with audio, you know? And a couple things, the main thing is photography would be like a lenses, right? Same camera body, Mm. different lens. Yeah, but I mean, that's kind of like changing your speakers though. (laughs) Is it? I mean, they're expensive. Well, I guess. Know. Yeah, that's true. It's not that's a cheap not, fix. Yeah. Not yeah. really. I mean, it could be. Yeah. Well, it's interesting in the regard that it'll show you the difference that your hardware you already have could do. Right. Because a true. lot of people think, oh, I need a new camera. Maybe. But if you get a different lens, it'll improve this camera. And if you get a new camera, as long as you stay with the same system, it'll improve that camera as well. Right. Hmm. So uh, there's parallels, but it is spending money it's true though. good lenses are freaking pricey yeah they're yeah. very expensive probably cost more than the camera body itself but, but yeah it does it just show you how you can whether you like he said you've got a device there that is more than capable if it can do more than you think you just got to give it right. give it what it's looking what it needs to do it you know well i guess you start at the beginning here you know what's your the physical media you're playing or i mean it could be streamed too but 
you know, what you're listening to is the most important thing, you know. The, the content's an easy of, one. Of yeah. content. The source files. Yeah. The, it can yeah. be extremely low cost to change that. Yeah. Or it could be if you're using a DAC, you have it misconfigured into your computer and the computer isn't outputting uh, bit perfect streams or the bit rate that the DAC is set to in the computer is different than the source media. Um, so things like that could be free. It's just a little bit of education, understanding, ensuring that your system's set up properly. But all these things are kind of sort of dependent on your exact configuration. So that is the trouble. You need to know what your weak link is. What's the what's something you could tweak? I well, guess it's kind of an understanding and, and, thing. And to that end too, like on the computer side of it, there's software you could purchase, like Nirvana. Nirvana. Mm. Um, I forgot what the other one is. There's a lot of them. There's yeah. a few of them, but they're yeah. designed to improve more or less the uh, the performance of your computer to send audio to the deck. Yeah which you may or may not see benefit from. It really depends on a huge number of factors. It's kind of like a t trivial tweak, though, but in some cases, people have reported pretty good gains. Well, particularly in better systems. I mean, these things do add up, you know. So, and again, that's what we need to also mention. These are additive things. Mm. Not that one thing's dramatic, right. but the combination of the things that you're going to solve or resolve over time do add up to being something that's more pleasurable than it was initially. So... You know, we're, we're, again, none of this is necessarily going to be, wow, I should have done that 100 years ago. Some might. Mm. You might find out you were running, you know, 16-bit files all day long when you're trying to play these. Yeah. When, you, when you got, you know, you're running high-res files, but the computer's looking at it and dr dumbing it down to yeah. below sub friggin' MP3s or something. All the <laughs> people out there with 144 hertz, 300 hertz or whatever gaming monitors running them at 60 because they didn't know you had to change it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. A setting. Right. Freaking setting. It's that. Yeah. Th that is definitely still rampant in audio, just like it is everywhere else. Yep. So ran into it a lot ourselves, actually, especially in the early days of computers. Remember, remember all the there was, was always nuts. software problems. Yeah, shit would crash all the time. Yeah. Then you got to check the settings again. Yeah. You got to ensure it's doing what you expect and what you think it is. So that's kind of sort of an education thing. You, gotta, you need to figure out what it's supposed to be, how to change it, and uh, what it should be. Simplest thing first, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, some ways to do that is experiment. You know, I mean. You got to remember what the setting was, so if you so you don't screw something up. So take a picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. That helps. Screenshot. screenshot. Yeah, I mean, you know, but you could try it. I mean, you could always try it. There are a lot of settings in this stuff, particularly when you get into that aftermarket software bit, yeah. like Autorvana. See if you hear it. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, they got all different settings, but you got to be careful with that. But then again, there's usually a button down there for people they know already yeah. that you're going to screw it up at some point if you do that. So return <laughs> default, to default. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's usually a good idea. You know, that's your that's your savior if you do if you do manage to stop hearing music. A lot of people probably trick themselves on that one though. They'll change the setting. They'll think it's better. Yeah. But, but that's okay. That's okay. If, like, you, think if you think it's better, better I guess it is yeah, better. So. As long as it still, it still still works. Same right? difference. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like uh, overclocking a PC, you know? You're, you're just in the BIOS or whatever, UFI, and you're like changing stuff, and you're like, okay, something's wrong now. I don't know what, what I changed that was wrong, so you just got to start over again. Yeah, right. One of these boxes is checked. Yeah. That's not I hope you can without, before the freaking smokes. Yeah. Change one thing at a time. Yeah, yeah. one thing at right, a time. Right, one thing at a time. Yeah, don't confuse yourself. And yeah. by all means, if you're going to change settings like that, don't be drinking alcohol at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's not a good idea. <laughs> we do see that. Occasionally we get some emails Because from you will go way over the top yeah. when you start making one change, and that doesn't work. Then you make another change. You get those late-night emails, and <laughs> ooh, they're doozy sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so you want to you wanna be fairly sober if you can do that. You know? Otherwise, just leave it alone. <laughs> you know? But, uh, I mean, what else can we think about? I mean, the, the connections. We were talking about the video that we just did last week about all the different connection inputs on a DAC. Yeah. You know, make sure you're using the best one for the application, which or might... just try them all, right? Well, yeah, you <laughs> need well, uh, yeah, you kind of need a lot of cables for that, but <laughs> yeah. you could, yeah. But you know, make sure you make sure that it, it makes sense that it's it's sh it's shaking, it's it's talking properly, whatever you're using for a source, a computer, or an iPad, or something, is properly connected to that device, and that maybe you could do better. You know, that would help. I mean, you know, going from like uh, like an optical connection to a USB might be better. Because optical has limitations as to, you know, the, the, the frequencies, how much bandwidth, or how high a res it'll go, where a USB will go pretty much play anything. So, you know, you, things like that, you experiment with that over time and just see, well, if that makes a difference or not, you know. Pretty much you got to find out what are the possibilities of configuration? What can I change? And if it's easy enough to do, if it's cost effective, try it. That's Really, usually that's the best thing you do is the mm. experience. And since this thing is kind of the audio industry is a bit subjective. Um, a bit. 
it's kind of best to try it for yourself. You may find you like something and either nobody notices the difference or they don't care. Um, so if it's cheap enough, it's easy enough, try the different connection on your DAC if you have the cable laying around. Why not? Try a setting on a piece of software and see if you hear the difference. Well, for that matter, too, you can also try different cables. You know, um, I think we touched on that on another one where, you know, we got like Linus now doing testing HDMI yeah. cables and he's finding discrepancies and mm -hmm. ratings and, you know, what it is. And I mean, you know, it's, you don't, you never know. I mean, you could add a, you could have a cable in there that's dropping down your res and it's been there for 20 years and you change it one day and you're like, oh, shit. Should have done that 20 years ago, and it, it's something stupid like that where you got to pay attention to details, even the cable. And don't don't yeah. expect that the Amazon special is the best thing you could do there. You know, you could try something better and just see if it if it helps or not. If it doesn't help, send it back. You know? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. You know, but try I think it's that. worth a try. Yeah. Analog analog cables too. It's not just digital. Try things. Try power cords are a great thing too to play with. The people find that the easiest thing in an audio system is to plug in a different kind of cord. And I'm talking guys that make cords for a living, power cords, upper end cords. But, you know, you never know. You know, you, you could be just grab. You might have grabbed a cord out of a box or something that was for who knows what it was made for. 20 years old, right? And you use that. Ah, it'll work with this. Hell, a lot of the gear, like we sell 11 audio stuff nowadays, it doesn't even come with a cord. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you, you've got to have a cord or, or get one, a, you know, a black beauty, as we call it, a stock IEC style cord or a higher end. A lot of the customers we, we deal with already have better power cords so they'd rather use something they have because they're familiar with it and they, they know what to do with it so bottom line is that that's an option that you have available in audio is to play around with this stuff it's simple you plug it in and you see if you hear it or not see if it does anything on that device or not you know and it's another it, way to it's definitely one of those things that's a bit of a hot topic but um without a doubt it is something that you need to try for yourself i think yeah um just like most things and it's very possible you don't notice a difference. It doesn't mean every change you make is for the better. A lot of times you don't notice a difference where it doesn't matter to you or it's, it could be even worse. But really the only way to achieve a system that you know and you're confident is as good as it could be is trying things, which unfortunately that's kind of the answer for everything. That's why we call it tweaking. Mm, right. Tweaking means you're R&D. You're your own R&D department. Yes, you're but certain. if you think about it, that's kind of the right approach other than the, the cost, the time and stuff like that. Cause then you know, this is as good as it gets. You know, I tried this, that, this, that, and I know this is the best. I heard the difference and I narrowed it on this one, right? And then you move on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And that's an effective method that usually produces a very desirable result, but it takes a lot of time and you need to try to minimize the cost of it. So start with the easy things, the cheap things first, and if you, get the itch you can keep working your way up trying all different things along the chain yeah i mean and you know on that note um you may reach a point where none of this matters anymore and mm. usually what that means is something in the system is a limiting factor yeah. you've just run out of resolution could be the speakers or the headphone could be anything and at that point you got to use your gut i normally tell people what's your what's your you know the system if you had it for a while What's your instincts on that? What, what do you think is the weakest link in the chain? And almost always when you ask somebody that, they go, well, you know, I've always questioned a DAC mm. or, or, or I've something. You know, they always think, they always have an idea. And I said, well, why don't you? A lot of times, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if, I mean, again, if you talk to someone like us where we know what all this stuff sounds like for the most part, we could almost immediately point you to what the limiting factor is in a system. And, you know, whether it be a one, one piece or the headphones or the, you know what I mean? We know. We well, just know. It definitely helps if you heard most of the things. <laughs> you know, well, you know yeah. what to. Yeah, you switch. know, you know. At one point, they're going to run out, and where you need to be to the next level. And um, I mean, some, a lot of times that's just it. I mean, if you're going to, if you're prepared to go to the next level, do it. That that solves. That brings you now into a whole other level of tweaking. Now mm -hmm. it starts all over again now. Yeah, so beware of that. So we might just not want to. All right, good enough. I've hit the limit of my uh, right. my system. Yeah. I'm done. Exactly. Yeah. One tricky thing, though. We see people do this from time to time. They think, I already went through all the various permutations of this particular attribute. I solved this one. I'm on to a new thing. And they never revisit. That's an issue, right? Yes. If you're, if you watch popular YouTubers, uh, Bosnian Bill, lock picking lawyer, when you're picking a lock, you don't just go through all the pins in a standard pin tumbler 
and then, oh, bam, it's open. Sometimes you find the weak link, you set that one, but it may reset another pin. You need to go back. You need to revisit that one. Hmm. Ensure that now this in this new configuration, maybe you solve the weakest link, and when you go back, the thing you just touched on is the new weakest link. Yeah, what, what I tell people with that one is you always second guess. Um, you always, they call it second guessing, for those who are, might not be from... English accent <laughs> side of things, but you always second guess, which means you always think about it over again. If yep. you change something, you need to question everything like over again. And you, you know, I've seen this with like uh, line conditioners and things like that, where you know people put a line conditioner in, and it solves some sort of problem they had in the system, you know, whatever it might be. Now over the years, the system evolves, gear changes, that problem they had went away, but they're still using the same line conditioner, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden that could become a weak link. Maybe that line conditioner is no longer up to snuff with your current gear, or you don't need it anymore because you don't have a problem. So, you know, it's, it's, and I'm not picking on just line conditioners, but it's a simple thought process where, you know, I put that in there because I heard a hum or I had a noise and now it went away. Well, that might not be a problem anymore. So you might not even need it anymore. And it, it goes on and on, but, mm. you know, you always got to look back anytime you change something and, and basically start the process over again. Yeah, I do like the lock picking analogy. That is good. Because, yeah. yeah, you can't just go through them all and, oh, this is unpickable. Because you know? yeah. <laughs> you that's a conclusion some people come to, right? Yeah. Oh, I can't pick it because I went through every pin mm -hmm. and I couldn't get the lock open. Mm -hmm. Well, you think about it, that's really experience. You know, it really boils down to experience. And, of course, the ability to think outside the box, too. I think a better way to put it would be you need to take more of a scientific approach to things. So rather than saying, I solved all these problems, I'm done, it's as good as it can be, assume you're wrong, because most of the time you are. Yeah, that's one way to look at it. What you yeah. do is over time, you seek to be less wrong, and then hopefully you kind of revisit all the things. You figure out, what can I do to optimize the system? You're constantly cycling through it. What can I change? Well, you do over get better and over at it. Again. Just yeah. like lock picking. Yeah. You start out sucking. And then, yeah. then some of these some of these guys though like ridiculously fast. You just get good at it. You know. Yeah. You want to watch his videos? It's funny how quick you go put on. Some of them it's just I like know. you put some ketchup on it and it opens. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's any lock that's taken him more than three minutes. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, he doesn't show you videos picking like a an Abloy Pro well, that's too. true. Because yeah. that would be a long video. But he but he does have. I mean, he's done it so many times that he already knows. He could look at it and go. Oh, I already know what I need for tools and well, stuff yeah. like that. You know, which I mean, that's part of the that's part of the trick, right? It's like yes. You, same with us. You walk into a system, you look at what's in the room, and you go, "All right, I pretty much know what cabling and power cords I got to put on this. I know where I got to put the speakers, yeah, given their design. That's a big thing. You too, know yeah. what I mean? Experience. Placement. Yeah, yeah. you already kind of already know. You look at the room, you go, "Well, I can see where I'm going to have problems here. I can tow them in a bit more of this. Oh yeah, big glass windows and stuff. Yeah, you these know. these yeah, well, these are things that as a beginner would take years possibly to do if they're not listening yeah. to the right people or not listening at all mm. you know where an experienced guy would just walk in and just set it up for you <laughs> okay right 15 minutes you're pretty much close and then you tweak right, then right. you tweak then you tweak yeah you need to get pretty much there that's yeah. why they're called tweaks yeah you know you right be already pretty close so there's a lot to know in that and uh, usually the best bet really is if you can start with a professional you know your local dealer or somebody who knows what they're doing it's well, or you become a, a professional time. You take all the time. You can but wow, that Learn is the, that's the, the that's slow a long boat. way. That's the slow boat, baby. It takes a bit. Yeah. yeah. Here's where that's where you get shortcuts. You get shortcuts yeah. from people who've done this before. That's right. And they'll point right to the problem, almost yep. invariably. You know, they're like, you know, you tell me what your problem is and what you don't like about it, and I'll point to where where it's probably going to come from. Hmm. So. The reality is, for most people, this tweaking process is pretty much lifelong. It continues until you either decide. I don't care enough anymore, I'm done, or <laughs> you run out of money. Yeah. Those right. are the options, right? Because um, for the most part, there's almost always something new, better, that could improve on what you have. Uh, so it is a very, very time-consuming if you want perfection. I find that most people stop tweaking when they retire. Mm. They're no longer, they no longer have the full-time income coming in. Yeah. They're more or less fixed income. I mean, and not that they're broke. They don't have to be broke or anything. It's just that they know that they can't go and spend ten, twenty thousand dollars for boxes all day long anymore. It doesn't work anymore. You well, know? some people find enjoyment out of that thing, but other people just want to be done with it. They just want to have a good system. So it really depends on where you are. But I think the ultimate goal for anybody should be to find a system you're very happy with, that you feel have no faults and flaws, and well, minimize. Minimal. Right. Like you're you're not worried about how trivial. 
this fault could be because um, you've already tried other exhaustive approaches and you know this one maybe it's not the best but it's quite good i think we did a video a while back a month or two ago on choosing how to choose gear or something mm -hmm. for yeah. you know and probably boiled down the fact that you you know you really if you don't know you should probably do your research was the first thing right right and then the second thing is obviously at some point you got to stop doing research and actually get it right buy it purchase it use it well you know? i guess that's that's the bottom line here is it comes down to it's a it's a personal journey for everybody everybody's different you pretty much just have to try different configurations different gear yeah. to know what you like it's yeah. a, it's fun that's the fun part of it for a lot of people some people they, they they hate that. Yeah. You know, and I understand that too. So yeah. and then that, that's not you. And then, at that then you find someone with experience yeah. and you tell them, hey, what should I buy? Yeah. And you buy it. Or you live with it the way it is. And, right. and life is good. Either way, that's fine. But, uh, but yeah, we're just, we're just trying to convey to people that if you want to go on a personal journey with this mm. and really, really get it to, to be some, something exceptional, you know, beyond what you thought it could do, it's going to take time. It's going to take, a, it's going to take money. And it's going to take patience. And beyond that, have fun with it. I think patience is the biggest one, though. It's a big one. You yeah. got to be the person that wants <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. It's like I just don't. Even yeah, know. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, right. And I get that. Yeah. You know, I get that because I've been I've been there with other things besides yeah. audio. In fact, I'm running out of patience with audio sometimes too. But, <laughs> but, yeah. but I've been there with a lot of other things. You know, oh, like, like cars. Tables. Like I just want to buy yeah. a car and turn the key on or push the button and start it. Right. That's it. Even well, the oil changes are a hassle, which you guys have avoided with the, yeah. with the Teslas. But, you know, I just don't want to deal with it. I don't, I don't, I don't care about, you know. No, turntables are the ultimate rabbit hole, though, with the tweaks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything's a, you know, fiddly a little. My Unami red cartridge mm. last week. Got it. Love it. Hana, Japanese, H-A-N-A. -A. Mm -hmm. Get it. Nice Didn't hear you buy one. Nice cartridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. I'll stick with my streaming. Well, I like that too, but you know, I got both. So, mm. but I'm tweaking the turntable. That is yeah, never ending, mm. and I'm afraid to go higher than this one, this yeah, cartridge, because well, it probably just never ends. And then, it does not end. And then the phono stage isn't going to be good enough. Well, then you're or like, well, I need and a then, whole new turntable. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right now, I'm hearing something I didn't hear before. It must be the motor, <laughs> you know, vibrating the. Sun. Who knows. It just never ends. I could see, I, you, I could see the rabbit hole where people get mm -hmm. into 30, 40, 50 grand turntable setups. They change the arm. They change yeah. the cartridges. Adding they, second arms. Yeah, yeah. you know. Then <laughs> you got to put, put pour a thousand oh. tons of concrete in the floor. Yeah, that's the way to, to go. To put the turntable on so there's no vibration. <laughs> you could see where it could get out of hand real easy if you just kept. So keep in mind that this whole tweak process that you may want to set yourself some personal limits <laughs> mm. because at some point you'll either blow a fuse or, or, or drop dead from doing blow it. Blow a fuse. Yeah. So Is that figuratively? It's or? figurative. Mm, you're okay. Mentally, you'll, mm. you'll blow a fuse and mentally blow a fuse. Yes. Mm. You will overdo it. It can happen. Some people are into that. Yeah. It can happen. Blowing fuses? You have to. As, Pretty much. As Quint said, yeah, man's got to know his limitations. Mm -hmm. And on that note, Thank you, everybody, for watching. Take care of yourselves. Peace us up.